this ball of energy, this is about as calm as I've seen him here, is Clyde. And uh, Clyde loves to get up in people's business. So in this video, we're gonna show you how you can establish an invisible boundary and help your dog practice keeping its distance and respecting your personal space. So um, I just got done going off camera with the Guardians, the escalated consequences I use to disagree with dogs. And we're gonna be using several of those elements in this exercise. And specifically, I'm gonna hiss at him uh, before he breaks the rule, and I'm gonna march deliberately at him. And when you're doing this, your authority goes whatever direction your belly button is pointing. So wherever he goes, I'm gonna have my belly button pointed towards him. Now we have, uh, and one of the things I'd like the Guardians to do, we have actually a young child in the house. We also have another dog. Now, when you have multiple dogs, it's always best to practice one dog at a time. So the other dog has been put up, and the child is taking a nap right now. But this would be a great opportunity to practice this exercise when um, moms have the ability to have one mom here and one mom could be working with the child. And so that way, we want to use the activity that we're going to do every day anyways and make it a learning teaching thing. And after you practice it enough, the dog just realizes, I need to stay away from the baby when it's eating, or in this case, one of the moms who's, when she's eating. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of step back and I'm going to let the, uh, let the guardian go ahead and uh, crinkle the chip. Now, I'm going to say that the line goes basically from here to here. It's hard to see from your perspective on the table, but there's a line in the middle of the couch. So I'm just saying this invisible line. So when you and crinkle the bag a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to insert myself between the dog and the person and march deliberately at the dog until it crosses the line. Now I'm going to wait for the dog to stop moving. The dog's out of the shot. And go ahead and crinkle the bag again. So I take a step to the side and I've stopped. So I said in dog, I don't like your approach. And you saw he understood and moved away. Now I take a step aside. And when I step, I stop and I put a pause between each step. Now when I sit down, I'm going to sit down right here. I'm going to lose some perceived authority. So he's right on the line right now. And I keep my hips pointed. I'm going to crinkle the bag again. Now, when I sit down now, I, there, I don't think he was violating to get that. I think he was just wanting to come and get some attention. He also is a bit of atten an attention whore. Um, but that's a different issue we talked about off camera. All right, so crinkle again. He just sat down underneath the camera, so I'm going to just kind of sit here. I'm going to have you mess up your living room a little bit in a second. So I have to calibrate. He doesn't know where the line is. When he comes in, he's not being defiant. He's trying to probe because this is brand new to him. He's just jump. I wish I had it before, but he jumps on everybody, gets in everybody's personal business. So this is unusual for him. So um, go ahead and crinkle it again. So I'm mirroring him. See, he's at the line right now. So if he goes any, so I'm mirroring. So if he took a step, I'm going to take a step. He approached the line. I stood up. And we both are at an impact or at a pausing point. Go ahead and take a chi uh, bite of chip. Now, normally he's right up in your business when you're doing this, correct? Yes. All right. Now I'm going to have you. Uh, now he's at the line, so we're going to put it just right here. I'm just going to have you take the chip and just throw it right here. Now, obviously, we're not going to normally throw food around in our place, but we do have a baby in the house, and the baby is absolutely going to do that. So movement is attractive to dogs' eyes. So we need to practice this. So this is a great thing to do to practice without the baby here, so we can practice without having the baggage, I'm not saying the baby's baggage, but we have to, the baby needs to be our full focus. So now, I, when I step away, again, I'm taking two steps and I'm pausing, two steps and I'm pausing, and then when I sit, I make that a pause as well. Crinkle the bag again. And go ahead and take another chip and munch it. And I'm going to have you take about five chips when you get done with that chip and just mic drop them right in front of you. Crinkle the bag. Make sure he's looking at it before you drop it. Yep. You heard something's going back there. Can he get back there? Yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. So we'll wait for him to come back. Uh, can you knock on the door? Yes. Page and Clyde. All right, now click on the bag. Okay, well, I'm going to talk about this. When he loses interest and comes back, we'll go ahead and do this again. Right now, he's excited because of that, the knock on the door and the other dog's barking. So what we want to do is, I, normally we're not going to drop chips, but we are going to do that while we're practicing to simulate what the child's going to do. 
And the line, you might want to actually put like a piece of yarn or painter's tape. Now go ahead and grab a handful and just drop them right here at your feet. So he took a step forward. Can you see him in the shot? You can pan down a little bit if you need to. And drop, grab a couple more and just toss them by the fireplace. And there's no way before this session that this would be going up, correct? So we're going to repeat this after this video, but I always like to do it myself so people can watch my timing technique. But when you're doing this, make sure you're very sudden and almost over dramatic in your movements. If, I, if, I, if, you, if you drop this and the, and the dog's just coming forward and you go like this, the dog's not going to respond. So when you do this and the dog's just coming forward, oh. now we have two women uh, for the uh, guardians here. I want you to use the same speed and energy that you would if somebody touched you inappropriately. Unfortunately, in our society, we don't have to deal with that a lot, but that suddenness is what will sell it to the dog. If you're like, stop, the dog's like, oh, you really don't need it. Now, he can come right up to the edge, so put the line down there. And what I'd like you to do is, again, practice having Blade, isn't that a cool name? Uh, having the Blade, uh, who's the child, sitting on the floor, and then take the yarn, or put, some people will put actual painter's tape on the ground so you know exactly where it is. And then you practice feeding him there, and the dog's not allowed to go in there. And then afterwards, if you want to do the housekeeping thing, because that's kind of fun, then you invite the dog to come over after you take the child away, and you pick up the, uh, the avocado and the grapes, anything that's poisonous to the dog. Then you invite the dog to come over. Clyde. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. No, normally don't give your dog much potato chips, but... It works in this case. So I've, I've done this with a couple of clients who have kids and they like to say, every time the dog comes over and looks up, we say housekeeping. Well, housekeeping means I get permission to come. So he'll sit at the edge and wait, and wait, and wait, and wait, and then you put the baby away, you pick up all the avocados and stuff he's not allowed to have, you sit down, watch a little cartoon. When you're ready, you just say housekeeping. And then he'll run over and gobble up all the chips like he is right now. So um, I want you to find way, uh, opportunities to practice this. Another way, great way to practice this is in your kitchen. So before you cook, um, establish where the line is, and again, you might want to put painter tape down. Microwave some bacon or roast beef or a meat that's going to smell. Now, as it, when you put it in the microwave, let it start going. March towards the dog just the way that I did here, using that third consequence until the dog's across the line. Then take one step backward, left foot, right foot, pause. If he stays across the line, left foot, right foot, pause. But you're keeping, you're walking backwards away from him. And at any point he crosses the line, you stop what you're doing, and you sprint at him as fast as you can, but you stop as soon as he crosses the line. So if I start sprinting and I get to here and he crosses the line, I stop here. I don't have to always go to where the line is. So and then I pause and when he and wait for him to stop moving. He's pacing around, he stops, then I take those two steps backwards and pause. Always make sure the dog is paused or is not moving before you step backwards. And never step backwards if a dog is moving forward if you're trying to establish a boundary, because when you step backwards, you're saying, I'm giving up this territory for you. So eventually you get back to the point where you're where the, micro, where the microwave is and the dog is staying outside the line. Then you take the bacon out or whatever it is and you put it on the counter and then you start pretend cooking. You open the cupboards, you grab the pots and the pan stuff out of the fridge and to the dog it sure smells like you're cooking, it sure looks like you're cooking. But when we're cooking we're actually distracted, we're thinking about stirring and the ingredient order and all the rest of that stuff. The dog sneaks in and we don't catch it within that three second window which is crucial. So in this case, we pretend cook, but we're really watching the dog. And don't stare at him, sell it. Kind of, you know, watch him out of the corner of your eye. And as soon as he comes in, thanks buddy, uh, hiss and rush at him. And after a while, he's like, man, they just see out of the back of their head now. And once he sits or lies down behind the boundary, then you could put the bacon away and actually start your real cooking, your real meal. You did a warm up session and taught the dog the behavior that we want. When we're in the kitchen now, the new rules, you have to stay on that side of the line. And as long as you do that, we're cool. As soon as you cross the line, I'm stopping what I'm doing and sprinting at you. Um, all right, so uh, you can do that same thing in this room. You can uh, microwave uh, something else and just, or have the kid uh, eating its snack. Now practice it here. Now you're gonna have to kind of practice establishing it. You wanna really keep about a seven foot boundary. Now this is a little bit of a cozy room, so you might go to maybe a five foot boundary. But I would do it with both dogs. And eventually it gets to the point where both dogs will sit outside the boundary. Uh-uh, we're not gonna go back there, nobody. And the dogs will learn to respect that boundary for you, and so instead of you having to police them and tell them, no, back, sit, here, go there, go there, we're just, we've taught them how to behave, and now we reward them, and at the end of the meal, they get to eat the stuff on the ground, or you give them a treat, or whatever the case may be. All right, Clyde, sit. This handsome puppy is Clyde. 
or make sure he looks at the camera. And these are some tips and, tips and tricks you can use on how to uh, establish an invisible boundary and help your dog practice respecting your personal space.